The medium is the message. That is something that I learned as a theory while at Cornell, but when I worked for the Wildlife Conservation Society, it became more in practice and not just some abstract concept. So from the dawn of human language, we have been telling stories to understand ourselves and our relationship to our environments. As you can see from this picture here, this is an entire story told through a medium of cave painting about how people related to their environment. And we're still doing the same thing. We just have so many new mediums and all of those mediums are telling us something. So as humans, uh, we have this very unique and amazing sense of language. And that's part of the reason why I became a communication major because language has always fascinated me and is so exciting to be a storyteller and be an autobiographer of the planet. I mean, I know whales have a language and I'm not sure what kinds of stories they're telling because we can't speak whale yet. Maybe they are also the autobiographers of the planet. But for now, we are the only ones we know of. So that's what's so exciting about being a conservation communicator because the stories we tell matter and they make a change. So think about all the stories that have made an impact on our society, that have made us feel things, have sold out movie theaters, have changed the way we see the world. Think about the stories that have influenced the way you act, the characters that have changed the way you see. Think about the children's books that you grew up with and how that might impact how you see yourself because our senses of selves are in and of themselves stories. And artists and musicians who have told stories that have spoke to you even without words. And ideologies that have brought us together and torn us apart. Well, all of these stories have to come to you through some kind of medium, whether that's TikTok, a television, a photograph, video game, a statue, a hieroglyphic, a presentation. But the sad thing is a lot of our stories end up looking like this. So what if I told you that the medium a story comes in is just as or maybe more important than the story content itself. And so if you think about what I'm doing right now, it's a TED talk. What does that even mean as a medium? A TED talk means, well, I don't think that there was ever a guy named Ted. I haven't done research on what a TED talk is, but by having a person stand up here and do a PowerPoint, it means they probably have authority about something. It's a very different experience than if I took this exact same content and told it to you through musical theater or a song or a dance or a collage or a dream. So that is what is significant about this guy right here. This guy is Marshall McLuhan. He's a media theorist and philosopher. And I remembered learning about him as a freshman at Cornell. And I thought he was pretty crazy <laughs> because he said, the medium is the message. And, um, you know, it, it kind of made sense. Um, the way information comes to us is pretty important. But then I started paying a lot of attention to it. Every time I watched a movie or read a book, I'm like, why is this a book? How would it be different if it were a movie? And so I'm just going to play you a little sound bite, if I can. <laughs> If I can't, it's okay. Imagine that you hear a soundscape of Yellowstone National Park. You're hearing, you can close your eyes if you want to. You're hearing buffaloes calling. You're hearing birds and bubbling, heat pools. All of these sounds create a sensory world. They create a story, even though it's a soundscape. And so this connects to my work with the Wildlife Conservation Society because I had to come up with ways that we share our content through different types of mediums. And we worked primarily with rural communities. And so we were researching how 
do we tell stories to rural communities? And how do they want to tell stories to us? Do they want to use books? Do they want to have podcasts? Do they want to use TikTok? And as I've listened to some of the presentations today, we've learned how TikTok helps um, kids learn um, about how using mediums of art can inspire people to help Cayuga Lake. And so part of that is the spirit of medium being the message. So um, the Wildlife Conservation Society in the Rockies wanted me to do some research about alternative storytelling platforms so that we don't have stuff that looks like this. This is the F-shaped reading pattern, and it is, it's okay to publish online news articles. Sometimes that's the best medium to get certain information across. Like we all read articles, but we all tend to read it in an F-shaped pattern. You read the top line, and then you kind of go down a little bit, and then you read maybe another line, and then you skim the rest. And that's great, you know, that's the easiest way to read when you're in a hurry. But what is a way to truly immerse and engage people? What is a way to speak to people where they are in rural communities who might not have access to the internet all the time? Or what is the best way to capture one of the original storytelling methods, which is oral communication for thousands of years? This is how humans have been talking. It's, it's kind of crazy that we suddenly, we, we write down symbols and we can understand them and communicate information, but there's a huge difference between these two mediums of written and oral storytelling. In a lot of indigenous communities, anthropologists come in and they think they're doing a great job by recording elders telling stories of ecological imperative. But the thing is by, we call it remediation, by changing the medium of their stories, they're changing the message. So if you go to an elder and you record their story, it's no longer living. It's no longer being spread through the air, through the atmosphere. It's no longer kept within a geological re region in which the ecosystem of the story matters. Suddenly, you don't have an audience that can interact with the storyteller. Suddenly, you have a completely different story, even though the words are the same. But with oral communication, the story is always adapting to the audience. It's always shifting. It's shifting like the environment that we're telling stories about. So at the Wildlife Conservation Society, they do a lot of work to try to bring this method of storytelling to the public. But they do things like record poetry by indigenous poets about buffalo. And so what is the medium of poetry? trying to say, what knowledge can we learn about poetry that's different than watching a science documentary? Because science, it's great to have numbers, but if we want people to feel science, we have to use other mediums and ways of communicating. So this is where uh, Marshall McLuhan gets into these two concepts. Bear with me, because I thought this was crazy first at, <laughs> as well. But he talks about hot and cold mediums. A hot medium is kind of like what I'm doing right now. I might ask you a question. You're not supposed to respond. I'm giving you all of the sensory information that you need. I'm giving you pictures, sounds. It's, it's all going all over the place. Whereas a cold medium is like a seminar where you're supposed to interact with what you're experiencing. There is sensory information taken away so that you want to participate. And so using hot and cold media is one of the best ways to fully immerse and also engage with your audience because you can create something that fully immerses them so they're not just reading the top line of an article. And then you can also take sensory information away so that there are blank spaces and they want to contribute their own stories. So this is what I did with a, um, I made a photo contest because WCS uh, in the Rockies wanted to ask people, what stories do you have about your connection with nature? They called it, what's your wild? Because we wanted to know what the wild is to people. And it's, we had such a wide range of different interpretations of that. Some people took pictures of pigeons at a landfill. Um, this was the winner of, our, of the contest um, just because of the striking beauty of, of this coyote. And 
along with a little story about it. And Marshall McLuhan says that a photograph is an auditory medium. So you can hear things when you look at this. And when you read the story, it gives you visuals. Even though you're reading something, you're seeing things in your mind. And so by asking people and taking away sensory information, we were able to get people to participate and engage with us. And so another uh, platform that I researched is Clubhouse, which is sort of a way of bringing back that oral tradition of storytelling in the digital age, where people uh, can go onto Clubhouse and they speak live. It's like a live podcast and you can tune into it. But the second it's over, it's gone. And if you want to respond, you have to speak in real time and then people can tune into what you're saying and it's organized by different topics and there are different Clubhouse rooms that you can go into and, and listen to people talk. And I thought, wow, this is an amazing way or platform that people can use for oral storytelling that travels through time and space. But still, there, it hasn't been fully integrated into conservationist storytelling yet. We haven't started to fully use the internet to tell stories in a sensory way. And so this is another example of trying to use a new platform to tell stories. This is by the WCS um, in a different part of the world, showing how people interact with coral reefs. And because the medium of PowerPoint doesn't allow me to, I can't scroll and show you how it's like a storybook. With each scroll, you see a new picture, new words, and there's only a small amount of words so that you don't have to just scan it and then not read. It's, it's more immersive. But the only thing they didn't do is they didn't add sound. The internet should not be a place for people who are able to see. It should be a place for all senses. We can't smell the internet. That would be really cool. But we can imagine what it would be like to smell the internet. And we should be focusing on that full bodied experience. But I think something like this called a story map is a great way to share information about conservation because you can see and feel what is happening. So to conclude, how can we change our medium to better give our conservation message? And we can do this in so many ways, fully immersing people in senses, but also taking senses away so that they want to engage. Or we can just allow people to use whatever medium they want instead of just putting them into a box of, you have to do a TED talk, you have to do a PowerPoint, you have to write an article. Um, start branching out. Um, WCS Rockies was talking about starting podcasts. Um, but also, I, I love the Buffalo Circle poetry ideas and, and programs that they've been using because it expands the message of what you're telling beyond content. And I think the future of that is what's going to change the world and specifically conservation communication.